If we can get that cost down, then we can also be competitive with the artificial food colorings as well too. And many of those are actually going to be probably legislated out of existence because there's mounting evidence that some of them cause cancers. I'm specifically referring to what they're nicknamed the azo dyes. And again, carbonic acid could be a solution for that. Hey everyone, in this video, we're looking at a company making, well, tons of products, everything from sweeteners to color food dyes using precision fermentation. They do everything from food products to chemicals to textile dyes. I wanna focus on food coloring additives in this video, especially how are we gonna replace a lot of these cancer-causing artificial food dyes that are currently in a lot of our processed foods. Let's get into the video. So you've just announced a capability to produce carminic acid via precision fermentation. So right now, uh, carminic acid, uh, as you alluded to, is made from uh, crushed uh, insects that parasitize cacti, and it's, uh, not a very sustainable way to make carbonic acid and for that reason it's very supply limited it's a very constrained uh, product and it's also very expensive for that reason as well too wait what is carbonic acid these white dots are bugs and there's a good chance you've eaten them before raised on cactuses they're called cachanils and the acid in their guts makes a vibrant red dye it ends up in tons of products from strawberry yogurt to M&Ms to lipstick. Indigenous people across Latin America traded it for thousands of years. And in the 17th century, it was Mexico's second most valuable export behind silver. It can be found in the walls of archeological sites, in priceless paintings, and in the robes of kings. Synthetic dyes and pressure from animal rights activists have pushed some Mexican farms to abandon production altogether. And cultivation of cachineals has been disappearing. It's a shame because it's the most powerful, brilliant red dye in existence. If you eat any kind of processed food, likely it's going to have some kind of a food dye to enhance the color because that makes it look more appetizing, right? If you're selling food, you want your food to look good for people to buy it. Some companies use more natural dyes like beet juice, strawberry juice, raspberry juice. Some will use this carbonic acid, which is made from these bugs. Some will use chemical dyes, depending on the company, depending on the product. It's already, however, an approved natural food coloring in, in many foods that are out there. So uh, when we alleviate this supply crunch, we'll be able to bring you know, the cost more in line uh, with something that's compatible with larger markets and hopefully make it in a more sustainable way. So it will probably disrupt the natural markets, not only for the beetle derived source, but also for other kinds of natural colorings, as you mentioned, beetroot juice. There are performance characteristics around uh, beetroot juice, which is great, by the way, mm. but um, it doesn't hold its color through heating and there are other sort of disadvantages that can come along for the ride that carbonic acid can solve. So these beetles can only be harvested in a few places around the world, primarily Mexico or Peru. So that just makes it rare and that is going to increase the price of this acid because you can only get it in a very small number of places. So what this company is doing is they're using precision fermentation to, instead of having to grow, feed, harvest, raise, and then kill, process, crush these beetles just to get this acid which makes this color, we can just replicate that molecule using precision fermentation. What happens when you take some of these bugs and we grind them up into a powder, we'll put some on this lid here, now watch this. We're going to add a few drops of water and watch what happens. In just seconds, it turns into a brilliant scarlet red dye. Now how do you determine if cochineal dye is being used in your food? Just look at the ingredients list and search for these key words. Carminic acid, or it could say carmine, or like in the case of this jello, they just went right out ahead and said cochineal extract or bug juice. So we can take away all that process, the laborious process of trying to grow and kill these bugs and just produce this acid in a tank. Even better, it's a natural product from these beetles, but now there's also not 
the disgusting, oh, I'm eating Beetlejuice factor because we're making it in steel tanks. If we can get that cost down, then we can also be competitive with the artificial food colorings as well too. And many of those are actually gonna be probably legislated out of existence because there's mounting evidence that some of them cause cancers. I'm specifically referring to what they're nicknamed the azo dyes. And again, carbonic acid could be a solution for that. California could make history as the first state in the nation to ban commonly used chemicals used to make a number of popular candies from Skittles to M&Ms. A new state bill targets red dye number three and other additives that have been linked to a wide range of health concerns from certain cancers to hyperactivity in kids. So we can use natural dyes like beet juice, raspberry juice, but they don't always hold their color in some applications. Or we can use chemical dyes which have health impacts, or we can use this beetle juice. So if we can increase the production of this beetle juice using precision fermentation to make it a lot cheaper, that will then replace all of those chemical dyes. So I don't know about you, but I think replacing those with a natural product sounds pretty good to me. Right now, today, uh, the existing carbonic acid market is small. It's about $50 million by revenue. Uh, and again, it's supply limited. Um, it's a very expensive product. Uh, we, when we reduce the cost, we believe we can open that up quite a lot and become a much bigger market. And again, competing with some of the artificial red dyes will be a very important aspect to that. So uh, we see tremendous growth in this field. And uh, we have other uh, color solutions in food coming along the way as well too, and, and also in textiles. And so it's not gonna be just carbonic acid either, it's gonna be a portfolio of, of different colors. Uh, we have four manufacturing sites around the globe for world scale manufacturing of our ingredients. So this last graphic is of our most recent acquisition. This is a large world-scale fermentation and biomanufacturing facility that we picked up in Eastern Europe a couple of years ago. We recommissioned it in the last quarter of last year. It's operating today with that existing plant in the top right of the graphic. And we're expanding it, as is shown in the artist's rendering in the center there, to double the fermentation capacity and also triple the downstream processing capability. We're also building a new pilot plant here as well, too, to help with the downscaling. Now, all of this is going to make all of our products, the vast diversity of our products, not just one thing. And so it's very flexible and we can make any molecule there. I'm Chris. We'll catch you in the next video.